More football coming up now on the Sportsmax Zone. We turn our attention to the rare nephew, Jamaica Premier League. The regular season came to a close on Sunday, clearing the fog that surrounded our vision for the 2024 playoff round. In the end, the teams were decided by heart, grit and mathematics. Let's take a look at how the regular season finale played out. Cavalier 6-0 over Malines. Dunbar Holden winning 4-2 over Veer United, finding their form too late. Montego Bay United 2-1 over Tivoli Gardens. Lime Hall beaten 2-1 by the reigning champions Mount Pleasant. Portmore United 2-0 over Humberland. Treasure Beach beaten 3-1 at home by ex-champions Arnett Gardens. And in a critical result, Waterhouse battling their way to a 1-0 victory over Harbour View. And as a result of that 1-0 victory over Waterhouse, over Harborview Waterhouse cementing their spot as a sixth and final qualifier ahead of Montego Bay United who got the result they wanted in de defeating Tivoli but on goal difference they were edged out for the number six spot by Waterhouse Cavalier with their big victory over Malines overtaking Tivoli Gardens for the number two spot so Cavalier joining Mount Pleasant as an automatic semi-final qualifier Tivoli, Portmore United, Arnett Gardens and Waterhouse to battle in the quarterfinal playoffs and uh, here is how those playoffs will work out Arnett Gardens against Portmore United on Wednesday the 21st well that should be Monday April 21 actually oh. um, yeah two Mondays from now yeah. April 21 and then the second uh, playoff game what was against Tivoli Gardens yeah yeah and that's Monday as well that's Monday as well it's gonna be a double header um, quarterfinal playoffs there and there are two legs so those, those are the first legs of uh, those matches. Plenty to discuss from the final day of action. And also as we look ahead to the playoffs, we are joined now by our Sportsmax analyst, Dwight Jeremiah. Uh, Dwight, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. You were on commentary yesterday. Um, uh, Harborview uh, gave Waterhouse a lot to think about yesterday, but Waterhouse got the result they needed in the end. Yeah, Lance, happy to be here. Hi to Donald as well. If I knew it was going to be a Manchester United cast, I don't know, maybe I, I would take up the offer coming on uh, today. The only good thing is that Sawyer's gave me some good tips, so maybe I'll win some, some money to be able to buy a drink when we win the title at the end of the season. Win which I'm title? So. Win, win which title, do I? <laughs> the, 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 the English Premier League, Liverpool. I have. Oh, the English Premier League. I, I, I thought they were third favourites to win with both City and, City and Arsenal fancied above them. I suspect that's why Sawyers and myself was on today, to give the Liverpool fans a battery. But that's fine. <laughs> but um, I stick to the Jamaica Premier League for now. Thanks. Um, <laughs> of which I heard Manchester might be joining us next year. But yeah, um, it's it's it was a, a good showing yesterday from from Harbour View. I was I was pleased to see the first half. Um, not that I, I think they were dominant in midfield. I, I just felt that they didn't attempt um i didn't threaten goal enough and, and the second half i was a bit disappointed because i felt they down to it somewhat um and uh really didn't really go for it uh and um didn't really look good at one point but yeah waterhouse they struggled um to Brian brian he struggled a lot i we were getting ready to put together the highlights reel of his misses or his reel of misses um, and he just got one, one bungling, bungling over the line. Um, if Waterhouse are going to trouble uh, Tivoli, who they're expected to play, um, there's going to have to be massive improvement because on the evidence of what we saw yesterday, um, really would would really struggle to, to, to get past a Tivoli team that they're yet to beat this season. They lost 1-0 and 3-0 against Tivoli, so that could be difficult for them. Uh, but they squeezed in yesterday, and I think that's all that mattered for them. At, at the risk of sounding sympathetic to the Waterhouse effort yesterday, I, I was watching on television, so you know I wasn't there. But the, the pitch conditions don't look that that good to me, Dwight. And to be honest with you, sometimes it's very difficult for the players to 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 look skillful and adept at their craft when when the pitch isn't offering them, you know, a, a true surface and and you know a good platform to, to shine yeah you did say that a true true bounce that you'd want to have i would i would counter that by saying our view did look slick on that pitch i don't know if it's because maybe the compound they're used to that type of pitch but no i mean yeah you could say that but i i i think if you take out the pitch out of it just just effort and desire just seeming that 
it looked like our view looked like the team that was playing for playoffs but in that first half i mean they really ran rings around uh waterhouse in midfield so much so that they had to take off um christian at one stage because rose and chukameka uh they were the ones that were having a lot of joy so if you if you put it down to the pitch our view they adapted quite nicely to a pitch that is waterhouse's home home game home home ground rather um but i just thought brian was really off in terms of his finishing as well they did make get some opportunities but he was really poor in terms of putting the chances away in fact to give them some credit i think they should have had a penalty in that uh first half uh i don't know why nation didn't make the call because he was perfectly positioned when jones um tackled jimison right in the box and the call didn't come i i think that was a let off for harbor view in that first half but that was pretty much most of what they created in that first half but harbor view looked the more vibrant of the two but they didn't make chances waterhouse i must say but was was really poor in the finishing do i do going to talk about the top six in just a little while but um let's stick with harbor view for the time being because of course big news recently in terms of uh, Lord Bernard not staying there as head coach. How much of a miss do you think he's going to be? Because I think how about you, they have been plateauing um, since they won the title a couple of seasons ago. Uh, they haven't been firing in all cylinders. Um, the fact that they, they haven't been playing at home at the compound is, an, is a travesty in my opinion. Um, and, and really, the administrators have a lot of questions to ask in that regard. But uh, what are your thoughts on Harbour View over this particular season and really the last couple of years? I think I think this season it's just really been a decline. And he pointed to a poor preseason and also uh, poor transfer dealings as well. Uh, but I think it will be a good a good move. Uh, Luddy is a, a great coach, um, uh, well respected. But I think you know sometimes familiarity uh, does breed contempt. I, I, I just feel like yeah, a freshening up would be good. And from what I'm hearing, it may not be any of the backroom staff that will rise to the occasion to become the the main gaffer at Harbour View. So they may be looking outside. Uh, I think just a freshening up, and there there are some players. Words are that players are just a little bit too complacent, and and maybe the dressing room. And need some shaking up. So I, I think he has recognized that too. And maybe not like my coach at Liverpool Club who says maybe running out of energy. Maybe a little bit, just maybe want to recharge. He's not like Clap saying that this is the end. He just wants to go and recharge his batteries. So, so I think it will help our view. So do I let, let's speculate just a little bit, right? Because I, I, I love the speculation here. So I am thinking that maybe they should go for a Lenny Hyde or possibly. And, and, and follow me here, because I think based on his ambition, I don't think he's going to be settling to be an assistant coach for, for, for too long. I'm talking about a Davian Ferguson. Um, how do you think their thinking is in terms of possibly the next coach at Harbourview? For sure, one of the thoughts I know they have is not going with possibly who is there at the moment because of, as I'd mentioned before, the dressing room and the familiarity, so they'll go for somebody else. And you mentioned those persons. I might want to also throw another name in the in the ring as well. I, I know he was there before. He's Harbour View through and through. He's here still. So to add to your little thing is what why why not Baby Gardner again and maybe with 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 a lot more um staff around him. Who knows? Um that could be it as well. Ferguson, I've had a chat with him and I don't think I don't think he wants to go Premier League um in terms of going on his own I, I don't know that's what he said earlier um in some chats we had but you know but things could change when opportunities come up so who knows um but uh i, I don't know you know that would be a, a a good choice i feel but i want to throw bb in there and see how that makes up your little speculative efforts <laughs> you know that, that that's that's interesting i mean i know we offer any more comments in the aftermath of what you just suggested but but fine let's look at uh, the matchups in the playoffs because there are a couple of big matchups there and i think the one that jumps out at me is uh these two teams which have battled for titles in the past we're talking portman united and arnett gardens i mean what do you what are you expecting there <laughs> well um you look at the stats and the stats says 
on it. They haven't had the better of Port more this season. The closest they've come is in their recent um, game where they ended 1-1. Uh, the first game that they, they played, Port more won that game two goals to nil. Uh, Port more sort of have uh, tapered off somewhat, but maybe just looking to peak again. Uh, sometimes you just want to get the boys ready to go again, but on it on their day can be very exciting and, and, and it could be an exciting tie because I think there's a lot of uh, thing about on it when they go forward. Um, one of the most like, more exciting teams in the Premier Leagues going forward. Uh, Port Moore with with Philip Williams is a very organised team and and can be very mean, but they also have the focal point. You see Walsh there, and and they do have. Um, they're dangerous on the set play with Young going forward a lot of times and their rotation is quite good. A lot of times you'll see Young staying forward uh, for long periods and they look to have maybe two at the back sometimes in their uh, offensive transitional play. So that can be a very, very exciting match. I, do, I don't know, despite Portmore getting the better of Arnett, I, I think Arnett, with the disappointment of last season, I, I think they're going to really have to go out there and, and really put on that show and get the results this time out. So, you know, I'd want to put more because of the sentiments with, you know, a player. I have players there that I've worked with, Philip from Trelawney, and, and, and being, the, being the bridegroom a lot of time at these events, um, I'd want to see him go through. Uh, tough one to call for me. It's close in terms of the results. Uh, but I'm just going to see Port more because they've got the better of, of on it. But and what else and Tivoli is going to be almost helter-skelter, right, in terms of the back and forth that I anticipate based on the, the coaching styles and what we've seen this season? And, of course, the top scorers going against each other. Yeah, uh, Brando seemed to be off it and, and really have to go... He, he's still scoring, his, though. He's scoring. <laughs> well, he's going to need a all right, put it this way then he needs a lot of chances to score from what I've seen in recent weeks I am not quite sure Tivoli is going to offer him a lot of opportunities to score um, I want to go with Tivoli on the form sheet because they uh, they went into this last week on the form table the top team and second was was, was Montego Bay United they lost out to Mbappé, um, but they did manage to score uh but what I've seen of Tivoli in recent week and what I've seen of the eye test of, of Waterhouse even yesterday, I I would have to just go against the odds to want to get a big payout to go against Tivoli in that tie. Um, I, I feel Tivoli for that one. Dwight, uh, thanks much for your analysis of these matches. I think it's going to be some really exciting stuff when we head off to uh, Sabina Park two Mondays from now. And we did mention about the, the fields that we've seen so far in the Premier League. Thank goodness that's going to be in the past and hopefully we'll be seeing some really good football over the next few weeks when the playoffs begin two Mondays from now. Thanks again, Dwight, for joining us. Just to, just to, just to say to you before I go, just remember, um, there are three teams in the title race in England as well. Manchester is not a part of it, so... Just remember that, all right? Couldn't care less. We take a break. Back with more after. <laughs>